So my name's Lee Eckroth. I'd first like to s introduce that I'm a realtor, I'm a mountain biker, I'm a husband to an incredible lady sitting out here, my wonder wife, Michelle. I'm a father to two kids, and I'm also a real estate junkie. Now I'm guessing there's other real estate junkies out here, so let's define what a real estate junkie is. Number 10, you go on vacation and visit real estate offices seeking deals. Number nine, you hired a statistician to analyze the MLS stats. Number eight, you look forward to the Dave Pouch real estate show on KGAL. Number seven, you get excited when you have mail from the local realtor telling you that they have a buyer for your home. Number six, you keep a copy of Robert Kiyosaki's book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, on your nightstand. Number five, you own an extended Blu-ray version of the movie Money Pit. Number four, the HGTV logo is permanently burned into the screen of your plasma screen TV. That's my wife laughing, she knows that. Your nightly family hour is spent around the TV watching Love It or List It. Number two, you get excited and nervous when you see your hourly email from Zillow with your house value update. And number one, you spend six hours at a real estate forum. That would describe all of you here. So what I get to talk about today is how's the market. And what I want to talk with you about is how the market is from the residential real estate standpoint, which I believe to be the pulse of the marketplace. So let's look back over time. If we look at our stats, if we look at the US appreciation rates, I believe that there's equilibrium in everything we do in our relationships, in the marketplace, in the stock market. So if we look back over time from 1980 through about 2000, you can see that the average appreciation has been about 5%. Um, if we go back all the way to 1963, you're actually gonna see that, let me back up here. If we go back to 1963, you'll also see that we, we average about 6%. So let's move forward a little bit. We get to 2000 to 2006, and we all know about the real estate bubble that happened at that time. So if you take a look, we had across the nation a 54% value increase. That is not normal at all. And because markets always seek equilibrium, it had to correct itself. So we take a look. This goes back to 1963, and you can follow the line. If we just drew a straight line, that would be something close to about 6%. And then, look what happened right here. That is when the market went crazy. That's when people were buying real estate like crazy. That was a time that we could put a house on the market and we'd get 10 offers, just like that. So we move forward from 2006 to 2012 nationally. Values dropped about 11%. And it's even worse than that because we talked about earlier that values were going up by 5% a year. Here we had six years in which values were actually dropping. So this is nationwide. So we take a look at this because it's important to understand what's going on from the national level when looking at the local level. So for the fun of it, uh, there is a great report out there and a great website called FHFA.gov. You want to write that down. You want to be looking at that website. This is the most recent uh, research that was done. And the first chart we're looking at is what has happened in 2013. So the number one market in the country in 2013 was Stockton, California. So let's go back in time. In 2006, the market that tanked the greatest was Stockton, California. In one year, they had 25 to 30% depreciation values. So here we are, seven years later, Stockton Lodi, 24% in one year. That's just craziness. So closer to home, we have Bend, Oregon. We all know what happened over in Bend. The market exploded, and then the market tanked. Well, last year, Bend had an increase of about 19%. These are the worst markets in the country. Now, we are looking at marketplaces over 50,000 here. So I'll tell you, if you still want a great value, you should head out to Ocean City, New Jersey. Values are still going down in Ocean City, New Jersey. Uh, but you can take a look at all the different marketplaces, and then we can look at our marketplace. So the stats that Rhonda shared earlier are real, and they point to these numbers. And it's fun when you look at one stat compared to a next and where they come from, because they all start to come together. Here's Corvallis, we're number 61. In the last year, our values have gone up about 8%, and that's about right. That's about right. Today, we are averaging about 300,000 for our home. You can see over the last five years, 
that we have, we're still not back at our high. We're still at about 3% below what that was. And what that means to all of us is we reached our high in 2007 in Corvallis. And our average price of a home at that time was $307,000. We reached our low in 2011, and that was 272,000, which, as Rhonda pointed out earlier, we're a pretty stable market. That was only about a 10% drop. This is another great map to look at. It's from a group called Kay Schiller. Kay Schiller, a few years ago, put together this map to focus on what is going on around the country. So if you take a look at the bottom, it talks about when values are going to return to their highs. So we have a whole bunch of markets that returned before 2013. And then we have this marketplace. We, we have 2000 to 2014. And right up here is the Willamette Valley. And so this, this chart was done about three years ago. And these guys have been pretty darn close. So you can see there's, uh, they, they talk about us returning to our highs in 2014, which we're, we're starting to see that. But you can also talk, and this is, you can also see, and this is pretty scary, that there are a lot of marketplaces that are not going to get back to their highs until 2025 or later. Some of those marketplaces include Las Vegas, Southern California, Florida, and some areas up on the East Coast. Now, this map is considered pretty controversial because we don't know if it's true or not, and it's some people's opinions. But thus far, this has proven to be true. And so I bring this up because from a real estate investment standpoint, and from the pulse of the market standpoint, we need to understand what's going on in values. And some of these places, especially like Southern California, Northern California, and Florida, um, they, they're not going to see recovery for a long time. So we're really, really fortunate to have seen the recovery that we have. So today I want to share my opinion about the three rules of real estate. And so number one, I believe in location. Location, location, location. And so I don't think location is just where it's at in a neighborhood. I think location matters where it's at in the region, where it's at in the state. So I mentioned earlier I'm a real estate junkie, and real estate junkies hire statisticians to do numbers for them. So I'm going to share some interesting stats that I look at on a regular basis. This is a chart that shows what has happened in the Willamette Valley since 2006. Okay? So we can take a look at 2007. We've reached our highs. The little blue line here is Philomath. What happened there is that Philomath was actually building some really nice homes for a while. And there were a lot of people buying those nice homes. So they reached a very similar high price as Corvallis. What's interesting about this chart is you can also see communities like Lebanon right here. Lebanon consistently runs about $125,000 to $150,000 less than Corvallis. So when people are looking for a more affordable home, we can direct them that direction. You can actually see what, ha what has happened to Albany also, and we see this. It's very consistent. Albany is about $100,000 less than Corvallis. So what's important here is that we're paying attention to the numbers. We can see what's going on in the marketplace, and we can see the trends. So we can see where we reached our high, we can see where we reached our low, and we can see the direction that we're going. OK, so I am a real statistic junkie, and this is one of my favorite charts that I look at. So this particular chart goes back four years. And what we're seeing here, let me point out, this J means January, the D means December. Um, this is focused on residential listed properties. So in 2010, in our marketplace, we had about 469 residential properties that sold. In 2011, we had 494. But that's where we also hit our low of 272,000 for our average price. You can see what started to happen in 2012. And before I go too far, I want to point out that it's, you can see fluctuations. This line right here, this is an interesting, crazy line. What that line was, it was the end of the home buyer's credit that the federal government was giving. So we suddenly saw a huge rise in closings. But then you see what happens here. It drops back down. So then we move forward. We look at 2012, 577 sales. And we're starting to see our values go up. And then we look at last year. And last year was an incredible year. It was our turnaround year. You can see we jumped up to 682 residential sales. And our average price jumped to 299000 Now, there's a couple of things we as realtors look at when we pay attention to these stats. The first thing is, from a timing standpoint, timing is important. You can see that our busiest times of the year are June through August. Okay? 
that's the time people are moving around. That's the time that uh, new hires are coming in. You can actually see, and it's a pretty common statistic, that our highest prices that we experience happen in July and August. Uh, and the reason for that, and we come to, let's we'll add September to that. The reason for that is you have a lot of new hires coming into OSU. They're purchasing homes. They're moving in in August and September, and they are closing their escrows. What that means from our standpoint is when we as realtors talk about timing, and we share that timing is important of when you put your home on the market, the time of the year really does matter. So when people are putting homes on the market in December and January and they're wondering why they're not selling or they're not getting the price that they want, it's pretty obvious it's right in the numbers. So let's move forward and break this down into 2013. So this is what our marketplace looked like just last year. You can see that we had 25 home sales in the month of February, and you can see how it starts to go up. And even I talked about the trend of prices, houses selling for more as we get into the later part of the season. So this is, again, really important. And I'm going to get, on that, I'm going to get more on that in a second because we have a real need in our marketplace for homes. So what we can see on this chart is there are fluctuations. You can see how the prices go up and down. Even in the wintertime, you can see our average drop down to 278. And at the height of the market, it drops to 324,000. Important numbers to understand if you're thinking of buying or selling real estate. So this is the chart that Rhonda brought up earlier. And she was looking for somebody to shout out the word. And it's called an absorption chart. Yep. And so we look at this to understand what's going on in the market. Is it a buyer's market? Is it a seller's market? Or is it a stable market? Well, most feel that a stable market is somewhere around five months of inventory. So this chart was done on February 10th. It was taken from MLS Stats. And we are looking back, and we're coming down over to this far column to understand what's going on for months of inventory. So our hot category is a $300,000 house. Rhonda talked about that earlier. It's where we find most of our transactions happening. So if we look up here and we look at the $200,000 to $250,000 house, you're going to see we have, what is that, 2.8 months of inventory. We drop down. We have 3.6 months of inventory. Drop down, we have 2.3 months of inventory. These are clearly seller's markets, OK? Now, here's where it gets scary. Um, one of the questions I'm asked on a regular basis is, how's the market? And later, I'm going to share with you my standard answer is, it depends, OK? And so if I have somebody coming to me and saying, I have a $600,000 house, how's the market? I'm going to tell them, it's really scary. There's 36 months of inventory out there. I'm going to probably tell them that they have to sell their house for $500,000 if we're going to get it sold. So it's important to understand these numbers because it points us in the direction of, is it a seller's market? Is it a buyer's market? And each neighborhood changes. So we have to look at these. So other factors to consider are neighborhood. There's nicer neighborhoods out there. There's neighborhoods that are not as nice. There's location in neighborhood. At the end of a cul-de-sac, headlights going into you and the views that you have. Now, I also think that when you are preparing your house and the location really matters from a standpoint of how are your neighbors. And so nice landscaping features don't always turn into good selling features. This is a water feature that I would highly discourage. This is not a hot tub that you want to have. And we actually see this all the time here in Corvallis in about May. This is not the deck that you want to have on the front of your house, but it's real. So, your location, location, location matters. Uh, pay attention to that. Number two, presentation. I think presentation really matters. In today's world, buyers are being more picky. Okay? Buyers, just in 2006, they would buy anything. Values were going up like crazy. It didn't matter. Today, they're paying attention, and they're saying, don't fool me. I do not want to be a part of what happened back then. So. In real estate, we can control only two things. Two things, price and presentation. We can't control the marketplace. We can't control the price people are going to offer. We can't control when buyers are going to come. We can't control any of that. We can control price and presentation. So from that standpoint, first of all, pricing should be in ground, should be ground in reality instead of wishful thinking. So about 10 years ago, I was taught when I got into this business, 
that the market will speak to you. You can't control it. The market is what it is. But with the information you have, you can make good decisions. So you must look at comparables. You must look at what the market's doing. If you think you have a $400,000 house and every house in the neighborhood is selling for $300,000, good luck on getting $400,000 for that house. It's got to be based on reality. The Corvallis average list to sales price is higher than average. And I believe it's because we have a higher level of education in this town. What I experience on a regular basis is when a house is priced well and it's presented well, that people will pay close to the list price. Our average list price is 98 to 99%. There's some other communities in the area where they're down to 93%. Part of that perception is this very high level of education we have here. Someone walks into a house that isn't presented well and it's not priced well, they're gonna say, uh, you're trying to fool me. But they walk into a house that's presented well and priced well and they're gonna pay it. Let me add, buyers are willing to pay a premium for a finished move-in ready property and I call these properties cream puffs, okay? A cream puff is this. On a regular basis, I sit down with buyers and they come into the office and I say, so what are you looking for? And they start to tell me. They say, I want a three bedroom house, I want two bathrooms, I want a big yard with a view, I want it to have granite countertops and stainless steel appliances, and I want it to have a big backyard and I want to have great neighbors, and I want to have new carpet and it can't be stinky, and they go through all of this and I look at them and I say, hmm, pretty sure that's what everybody wants, okay? So I call that a cream puff because the cream puff is the same item that when you walk into the deli or you walk into the bakery, it's the first item off the chart. Here's the problem. A lot of the houses that are out there are, are day-old donuts, okay? <laughs> we know what happens to day-old donuts. They sit around, and eventually they sell. Everything sells. Every house has a buyer. What we can control is price and presentation. Even a day-old donut, someone can take that in the back room and put some new cream on it and hopefully get a higher price for it, right? So, you can either have a Dale donut, which eventually will sell, or you can have a cream puff. And what I'm suggesting right now is that we have a great market for cream puffs. I know a lot of realtors out there right now who have a lot of buyers, and they're just not buying any old house. They want cream puffs. So focus, focus, focus on presentation. Be sure the property presents well. So I want to give a couple of examples. These are real MLS photos, okay? This is a beautiful living room, staged, looks great, painted. This is a real MLS photo. Yep, the guy wouldn't even get up. Here's a kitchen. It's been updated, it's beautiful, they put in special lights, it's looking really nice. This is a lady who wouldn't change her kitchen. It looked beautiful the way it was, and her realtor believed her, okay? Here's a kitchen that's been updated. It's beautiful, it's, you can imagine yourself being there. This is a real MLS photo, you guys. This was the last photo in a photo session. My belief is the realtor probably should have been fired whoever left this, but that was the lasting impression of that particular house, a toilet up. Okay, rule number three, and I believe this to be the most important rule of all, and that is relationships. I'm very, very thankful for the relationships I have. I'm very, very thankful for the trust. I'm thankful for the opportunities that I have. But I also understand, and this is a, a great comment from a gentleman by the name of Jim Rome. We become the average of the five people we spend the most time with, okay? So when I'm not being a husband, a father, a realtor, and I'm not in Rotary or in the community, I actually love to ride mountain bikes. And a great example I give of this, and we can look at all of our own little worlds, I have a group of guys that I ride with. And today, when I go for mountain bike rides with these guys, I get to the top of the hill at about the same time they do. I get to the bottom of the hill at the same time they do. They may argue that, but it's true. Um, we have about the same skill level. But if I want to become a better mountain biker, I have two choices. I can either try to raise the average of the guys I'm with, or I can join a new group. Okay? In real estate, I tend to think about it the same way. If you're investing in real estate and you want to be an apartment investor, well, you probably should hang out with people who are investing in apartments because your chances of succeeding are going to be very slim if you're not. If you're thinking about buying your first home, you should probably be hanging out or talking with people who are home buyers, not with people who are renters. Okay? So look at your own lives and decide what relationships mean to you. Um, I'm a really big fan of making sure you're around the right people who are going to help you excel in life. 
So the question is, how's the market? That's the question I get asked many times a day. Well, I told you earlier that my answer is it depends. And part of that answer has to do with what filters you have on. So I want to share an example. I have a friend here locally who, when the market went south, she went to Las Vegas and bought up single family homes. Nobody else was there buying single family homes. It was an awful market, and we all said it. It's an awful marketplace. Well, she was there buying single family homes. So two years ago, when the market started to return, she sold those single family homes and made more money than you and I can imagine. In her eyes, the market was fantastic. In the rest of our eyes, the market was no good. So the constant answer is this, it depends. It depends on the location, it depends on the presentation, and it depends on the relationships that you have. I believe all of those are important because it's gonna drive what you do, how you do it, and the success that you have. So let's talk about market conditions, specifically for sellers. Right now, 40% of the buyers in the marketplace are first-time home buyers. That's a big number, and it's one that we have to face. These are people who finally, 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 they have jobs, they're feeling comfortable, they have down payments, they're ready to take steps to make home ownership happen. In Corvallis, the average price of a home is right around $300,000. That is the sweet spot. We were talking about sweet spots earlier. There is a very high demand for the average price homes in, our, uh, in quality condition in our marketplace. Now, in that two hundred and fifty to $350,000 price point, that's where about 80% of our sales are going to happen and they have been happening. So if one wants to have success or if one is thinking about selling right now, it's a huge marketplace. Interest rates remain at an all-time low. I have a client who is purchasing an investment property right now and they just locked in on a 3.875 loan. That's just craziness. I have another first timer who just locked in on a four and an eighth. That's just craziness, but it's still happening. And luckily we heard today why it's happening, but it's not always gonna be that way. So interest rates are at an all-time low and that helps sellers get more for their properties. And finally, this is an important one when it comes to sellers. There are a lot of move up buyers out there, okay? So we were looking at those 400 to $600,000 homes. If you're in that price category and you are considering making a change, there are a lot of people right now who own $300,000 houses who are saying, maybe, just maybe I can buy that more expensive home and step up right now because interest rates are so low. So there are a lot of move up buyers out there and we need to be aware of those people. And here's the thing for the new construction builders out there. We need more new construction homes between 300,000 and 500,000. Those are cream puffs. People love those homes and we don't have enough of them. And I know we have problems in Corvallis, but we need more of those homes. From a buyer's standpoint, I advise buyers they need to be aware of what's going on in the marketplace. If they see a cream puff jump up, and I, it's funny, I can always tell when there's a cream puff in the marketplace because I pull into my office, into the parking lot, and there's six realtor cars there at 10 at night. And so that's a sign that there's a hot market. And I'll tell my clients that, I'll say, look, do you want to be part of this or not? So buyers need to be aware that it's a very, very competitive marketplace for cream puffs. And it's going to become more competitive. We talked about equilibrium happening. There's going to be a lot of cream puffs that come on the market, and these people are going to be ready to make things happen. Low interest rates are making homes very affordable, which is why they're coming back. So my opinion as of today, it is a great seller's market as there is pent up demand for quality, fairly priced homes at 500,000 and below. Homes are getting a premium price when they are nicely updated and move-in ready. So right now, if you jump online, there's probably, what, about 130, 140 listings out there. Well, a lot of those homes have been there for 10 or 12 months. They're not selling. But we're also having homes that are selling in one day. So it's not that the market's bad, it's those homes just aren't prepped. So they need to be ready. Finally, it's great time, it's a great time to be a buyer. For owner-occupied investment properties, interest rates are at an, continue at an all-time low. Um, the lenders have made it much easier to get loans in that area. And so I touch on that too. Lenders have become more reasonable in terms of lending conditions for most situations. About four years ago, things tightened up dramatically, dramatically. People couldn't get loans at all, and it was tough. And you saw the numbers, they dropped and dropped and dropped. 
Um, it's become a little bit easier now, but people are being more responsible. So in summary, the needle is pointed more towards a seller's market in, price, in homes priced 400,000 and below. It is stable between 400,000 and 500,000. Okay. Part of this is, and, I, and, and this is important to recognize, a lot of people are looking for the Prius style home. They're, they're stepping away from the Cadillac Escalade and they're saying, I want a house that's more efficient, I want it to be more affordable, I want it to cost less to operate, um, I want to be able to live there and I don't want to be pushing my budget. So we have people who can easily afford a lot more but they're looking to make sure they make the right decisions. It is still a buyer's market in my opinion in the $500,000 and above range. We watched those prices continue to drop until recently and they've just stabilized. We're starting to see a few home sales at 500,000, but not a whole lot. So let me end with this today. I believe relationships are very, very important. There's a lot of real estate junkies out there right now. And getting together with your team, getting together with your advisors, understanding what's going on and looking for the opportunities is super important. So I'm gonna challenge you, take what you've learned today Go from being a real estate junkie to being a real estate professional. Use the information to make smarter decisions to help your community, to help your families, and move forward. Thank you.